Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on Forgotten Weapons. I'm Ian. I am here today with a really cool European uh, turn-of-the-century trials pistol. This is a Mueller semi-automatic pistol. This was patented in 1902, and it was submitted to both Swiss and Swedish military pistol trials. Unfortunately for Herr Mueller, it failed to uh, win either of those trials. Uh, he did also submit one of these guns to the U.S. government in 1905 for trials or for testing. Uh, presumably, uh, and there's some record of a, a suggestion of a 45 ACP version of this pistol. What I suspect happened was he sent the one gun to U.S. ordinance to test out and probably said something to the effect of, if you're interested in this, I can supply you one in 45 ACP. Um, the U.S. government was not interested. Um, they found they, they had some problems with ex with ejection and with firing failures to fire, um, which they blamed on a weak firing pin spring. It's interesting to think about the fact that in a lot of the U.S. pistol trials around this time period and, and the rifle trials too, the ammunition supplied was really haphazard. And if American-made ammo was being used in this gun, that may have been the reason for the problems more than the pistol itself. Anyway, a total of 10 of these were manufactured. This particular one is serial number six. Uh, it and all of the others are in 30 Luger caliber, which would make sense. This, in 1902, that's what Luger pistols were chambered in as well. And it's really interesting. There are some definite Luger-esque uh, elements to this design, the magazine in particular as well. However, this has, this is a locked breech pistol and the locking mechanism looks like it's straight out of a Walther P38. Except that, of course, it predates the P38 by about a third of a century. So um, why don't we bring the camera back here and let's take a closer look and pull this apart and check out the internals. All right, the markings here are pretty minimal. Uh, really, the only significant marking is up here on top of the slide. Uh, patent, uh, an abbreviated word for Bernhard Mueller out of Winterthur, Switzerland. Now, as far as controls, we have a safety lever here on the back. That's safe. That is fire. This is kind of interesting. This is actually a cocking indicator. This piece sticking out the back actually allows you to recock the gun should you need to, if you have a dud primer, for example. So, and push that in. It clicks in place, and the pistol is now cocked and ready to fire. Um, operation is a short recoil, uh, pivoting wedge system very much like a Walther P38. That's our cycling. Magazine has a button release here at the heel. And then the magazine itself obviously looks very much like a Luger. Um, and it is chambered for the 30 Luger cartridge. Disassembly is extremely simple. There is a disassembly lever just in front of the trigger guard here. And what I have to do is pull that forward and then pull out the magazine. And then the slide just comes right nicely off the front of the frame. There's that. And then we have our internal piece here and our locking wedge right there. That is a field-stripped Mueller pistol. I guess I can take out the recoil spring as well. That's our field-stripped Mueller pistol. The machining on this is pretty darn intricate and very nice. The pistol runs very smoothly, but uh, this would certainly be an expensive gun to manufacture in large quantity. So if we take a look at how this actually locks, what you have here is on the actual barrel extension, a pivoting wedge really, really similar to what we find much later in the Walther P38. So that sits in the barrel extension like this, and when it's in battery, it is cammed up like that, and this wedge locks into this recess in the bolt carrier. So they sit together just like in that configuration. And once these parts begin to move backwards, what happens is 
this is cammed down, which then unlocks the bolt carrier from the barrel extension and allows it to travel freely backward. So this is with the, the wedge in the upward position locked, and I can't move these two out of alignment with each other. Once this cams down, then the slide here with the bolt in it is then able to move backward and cycle. If we look on this side, you can see that this opening right here is our ejection port. So when it comes back, it's going to eject the case there, come to a stop about there. On the way forward, it'll pick up a new round from the magazine and chamber it. Our frame acts mainly just as a, a carrying body for that whole upper slide assembly. We've got all the rails here where those upper pieces move. This piece right here is our locking block. Well, a different type of locking block. When this disassembly lever is closed, this locks this piece in place, prevents it from coming out. It's interesting and kind of typically Swiss that uh, you'd use a piece this complex and, and requiring this many steps to manufacture as simply a lock to keep the, the upper slide assembly on. Uh, that could almost certainly be done with something much simpler like a round dowel peg. But there you go, 1902 Swiss instead. This is the hammer right back here, the silver Y looking piece. There is that Y shape to it because this round hole there is where our recoil spring sits. And the hammer has to have that opening in the center so that it can uh, slip around the recoil spring and guide rod. The firing pin is this full width piece. You can see I can push that in and the firing pin protrudes. So when you fire the gun, the hammer actually contacts both edges of the firing pin like that. If I dry fire the gun, there we go. Dry fire the gun, let the hammer down. There you can see the hammer. And using the recocking bar in the back, we can move the hammer through its travel. So that's what the hammer does when you fire. Reassembly is just as easy as disassembly. You simply basically slide the pieces together and then slide the slide onto the frame and you're all set. It's a really easy piece to assemble and disassemble. The recoil spring goes in here. Really the only tricky bit to this is ensuring that the recoil spring guide rod sits in its correct position there. And I have to open this because I closed it. There we go. Slide assembly is in. Push the locking block and everything is ready to go again. This is a really impressive technological pistol for 1902. That's very early in the automatic pistol game. You know, it was only by 1893 that we had the first reasonably commercially viable self-loading pistol in the C93 Borchardt. And this gun is is really quite elegant and clean and advanced. Like I said, the, the operating mechanism is extremely similar to the P38. One kind of has to wonder if Carl Walther was, a, was aware of this and suspect that he was. Now, by the time he was developing the P38, any of... Uh, Mueller's patents would have been expired, so it's not like there was any sneaky patent infringement going on. Um, but this may very well be the intellectual basis of the Walther P38. And you know what, just overall this gun looks really slick and cool. Thank you for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. These, this is a ridiculously scarce pistol. Um, I said only 10 made, uh, not more than a couple, uh, two, maybe three still around today. Um, it's a very nice pistol in the hand. It's a very elegant pistol. It's a very well-made pistol. It's really cool. However, just didn't manage to beat uh, the Luger and, and its other competitors at military trials, and Mueller, the designer, gave up at that point and went on to do other things. So, not something you see every day. 
If you enjoyed this type of content, please consider checking out my Patreon page and supporting me there. A buck a month goes a really long way in helping me to continue to bring you guys really cool prototype pistols like this. Thanks for watching.